If you see someone without a smile, give them one of yours. Hey everyone, Laurie here with my second Robin Marie Smith Design Team project. The first thing I want to do is get started with the actual cards that you saw at the beginning of the video. And later on we'll be using Robin Marie Smith's Art Pop cards, the Wait For Me collection, and also the In The Garden collection of stickers. But the first thing I want to do is start with the cards and that's going to be done using business cards. Now if you don't have business cards, you can go online and look for a template for business cards and print it out and use that. I would print it on a cardstock, a little bit heavier than printer paper, so that you can put paint and all the things we're going to do on these today. The first thing you need to do, get rid of all of your inhibitions. This is playtime. This is fun time. This is anything goes. Let's just have fun on these cards. So the cards I'm using are the Avery, and it's Ivory two-sided printable clean edge business cards. That doesn't matter. All that matters is that you have a sheet of business card templates so that you can paint on it, and then you can cut or tear them apart. Doesn't matter what color or who makes it or anything else. Because I'm going to be doing a lot of painting, I'm putting down my nonstick craft sheet. There will be a supply list below. So first thing we're going to do is take our card sheet and I am going to be using Deco Art markers. The first thing I have to do to decide on colors is decide what art pop card I'm going to use. And we won't be playing with it right away. That comes later, but I'm going to choose the card right now so that I can use my card as inspiration for the colors I'm going to choose. And I'm using the big one. There's two sizes in here. I'm going to use the large one. And I think what I'll use is this one. I really like this one. Okay, so let's put that down and have it in front of us so that we can look at it and you say, okay, there's greens, yellows, blues. So I know from my deco art markers and the paint colors I choose that I'm going to choose colors in this color scheme so that my cards kind of go with this. They don't have to match perfectly. They're not going to. This is an anything goes project, so just go for it. You want to make your cards black? Make them black. <laughs> That's up to you. What I want to do is I'm going to look at my card. I'm going to have it braced up up here out of camera. You won't be able to see it. And I'm just going to use it as my inspiration. And I'm going to say, okay, I've got yellow, so I'll put yellow out. Maybe the gold. Definitely the green, the blue. A little bit of pink. Might not use it. No purple. I might use the gray. I'm just going to start writing. I'm going to write words. I'm going to write a sentence. I'm going to write my name. I'm going to write numbers. It doesn't matter what you write. I'll start with the blue. And I'm just going to write, Laurie was here today. And then what I want to do is I'm going to turn my page. I wrote this way. I'm going to just turn it. And I'm going to choose my next color. And let's say we're going to go with a little bit of pink. We don't want a lot of pink, so let's just do a little bit. And I've already got some color here, and it's a little bit wet, and I haven't dried it. So instead of blending these, I'm just going to kind of write in the white space. Normally, I would dry this and then write all over it again. And you'll see that in the next step. I like the number 9, so I'm just going to put number 9. Write the word happy art. Go for it. And I'm going all the way to the edge, even though it's perforated and you're going to tear it off. This edge, when you're done, you can still use it in your art for something. So let's write something over here. Let's write, be creative. Okay? And then we'll put another little, well, little, little squigglies there. All right, so we got a little bit of pink, and we're done with that. So now I want to dry this because this is a little bit wet, and I don't want to put another marker on top of this. Okay, now it's dry. I've written this way, I've written this way, I'm just gonna turn it this way now. I love these art pop cards. And I do love them. And I put a little heart, put the little nine over there again, and a little squigglies. And you can see, you can't read it. That's okay, it's not designed to be read. It's just scribbling, loosening up, getting some color on your page, getting your first layers down, just having fun, and then feeling that playfulness. Get, get into that playful mode. Okay. 
Okay, our next step is going to be adding paint colors. I've chosen a few colors that again represent my card and the colors I have in my card. I'm just going to put some green dots on my paper here in three different areas. I usually work in threes. I may come back and add some more. I'm just going to take my brush and I'm just going to start painting. And one of the things I like about Dina Wakely's paints is they are a little bit semi-transparent, so you can see the marks through here. By the time we're done, you may not see these marks, and that's fine too. But if you do see them, that's fine too. And it's just a little added surprise, added, added bonus. The whole point of this is to get you started. It's just to have fun. You may not see it, but it's fun to do. Okay, I'm going to add some white accents to my sheet here, and what I'm going to use for that is a Mean Streak. It's by Sharpie. You can get this at an office supply store. It's a lot of fun to work with. It comes off like an oil crayon almost, but it dries permanent, and you don't have to worry about it smearing. That's all dry. The next thing I'm going to do is put my stamping on and the stamp set I'm going to use today is the stamp sheet called Natural Elements and it's by Ray Missigman and I've pulled out a few that I really like from this set. I don't know if I'll use all of them but I have them set aside so you just go through and pick out the stamps that you like. So I'm going to also use several colors of Stazon ink.
I already have my white accent in the background, but I want to put a little white accent on top now. And what I want to do is take my white paint, and I'm going to put a little bit out on my mat here, and then I'm going to kind of spread it with my finger. I take a piece of corrugate that I peeled the little paper off, and this is the exposed piece of corrugate. And so I'm just going to put some white paint on my corrugate here, and I'm just going to find some areas and put some white accents down that way. dried that and now I have one more thing I want to do. You can use a stencil, sequin waste, also known as punchinella. I'm just using my finger because it doesn't have to be perfectly neat. I'm just going to put some of this color on here. Okay, I've got my cards dry-ish. <laughs> I'm kind of impatient like that. I don't usually wait that long. And I'm just gonna take them apart now. And you wanna pop the perforated edges if you're using the kind I'm using. If you're not, you just cut them out. Okay, and now once I have this apart, see I can keep this and use this in other art pieces. I can take off sections of that, use it in my journals. So I always save this because I save stuff like that. It's just a thing. I just continue taking it apart. Some pieces might be a little more dark than others. Some might be lighter. Some might have more color. And if you find that you don't like it or you want more color, just add more. You can do it on individual cards. Okay, so now we have our individual cards. These can be affirmation cards. These can be inspiration cards. You can put prompts on the back of these and make a bunch more and stick them in a jar and pull them for your art journals. And I may do that at some point. I haven't even done that for myself, but I think I will. And uh, one of the things I'm going to use one of my sets for is I'm going to carry it in my purse because you see it's small. I showed you at the beginning. And I'm just going to carry it around. And if I happen to be somewhere and I just am in the mood, I will leave a little piece of free art somewhere. I'll take out one of my little cards and I'll just leave it somewhere like a bathroom or on a table somewhere at a restaurant for someone. You just never know what might make their day brighter. Now I can tell already this card's a little dark for me so I will come back later and add some more to that card. So what I did was I took a saying that I made up it says free smiles keep one and pass one on and so this set here is going to be for cheering someone up just uplifting someone the way I did this was I created an eight and a half by eleven image in Photoshop and then I wrote my little text and I lined it up according to the size of the back of the cards and if that's trouble for you just print out your saying and cut and paste it the best you can it's the thought that matters in my opinion so then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my cards, and they don't have to stay in order, and I'm going to put this saying on the back of each card. You could cut this wording out and put it on the front if you want to, but I'm going to put mine on the back. Now I also could just leave these like this and not do anything. If I found something like this laying around, someone left for me and it had some paint on the back, that to me adds a little bit of interest, like, wow, someone painted that. Someone actually painted that with their hands and got messy. and it's an artsy thing. I like that. So you don't have to cover up your backs. It doesn't matter. It's up to you. So I'm going to do a few of these off camera and then I'll do the last one with you so that you'll see what they look like. So I've taken all my cards and I've put my little saying on the back. And honestly, if it's not even, it's okay. So these are done, and all I did was just line up where they go, kind of cut around, and then I'm just going to glue it on the back. Now, if you're proficient with using your printer and the template that Avery supplies you with when you buy business cards, go ahead and print out your little saying on the back of your card before you decorate your cards. Don't run a decorated card through your printer. I wouldn't recommend that. but. You could go ahead and do that. I didn't feel like trying to do that process today because the other way was faster for me. I've done business cards before, so it'd be the same thing. Just run it through on the side you want to and then just decorate the opposite side. But this way it's just as easy. And you can write your little notes if you want it personalized. 
You can put little stickers on the back if you'd rather, like rub-ons or you know something you have in your stash that you want to use up. Little quotes, uh, little those little word stickers you can get. You can put those on the back, whatever you want to do, and just have a good time with them. And then I just cut them out. And that one wasn't too even, but you know what I say. If you know me at all, you know that I'm going to say it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's okay. So there's my last one. All right, so now we're going to move on to making the little holder. And we're going to make it out of this art pop card. And so you can set these aside for now. And let's get started on this. Okay, to make your little card holder, this is super, super, super easy. Not difficult at all. I'm going to use my scoreboard. If you don't have a scoreboard, just use whatever method you have, a ruler and your little stylus, whatever you have that will help you make your score lines. So I'm going to score two inches from one end. And these are rather thick, so I have to press a little hard. Don't press too, too hard or you might puncture it. Let's go over it a little bit. Give me a nice score line. And then I'm going to score my next notch, the very, the very next notch after two. I'm going to score two and an eighth. So there's just an eighth inch between your score lines. Okay. Now I'm going to turn my card over to the other side, and I'm going to score one and a half inches from the end. And then I'm going to score one and five eighths, which is the very next notch over, which gives you one eighth inch gap. Okay. I'm going to put this down for color right now because we're using mostly white and it gets blurry on the camera, I think. So now you've got your score lines. And you want to just fold on your score line toward the white part. So just make your score lines there so it's going to be a little tiny gap like that. So when you fold it, it gives you a little bit of space in between these two pieces. And then you want to do the other side. Fold on that score line and then fold on the other score line. The large two inch piece is your bottom and the smaller flap section, the one and a half, is your top. Now, when you stick your card in, it's going to go like this, and it's going to be hard to get out. So I take a, a punch, and now use a one inch punch, and I'm going to punch out a little section of this piece right here. And I kind of eyeball it, I don't center it exactly. So just eyeball it and do a little punch. Then when you put your card in, you can see it here and you can easily slide a card out. The next step is to connect the sides of your business card holder. And when I put my business card in, I don't want it to fall out, so I need to secure it over here. I didn't want to go into a big deal of trying to secure the whole side, so I just thought that I would use my sticker tape and go around my card holder here. But if you use sticker tape, this little gap here you're going to have sticky on the inside of your holder and your card might stick to it. So to prevent that, I add a little tiny piece of paper right here so that when my sticker goes around, it's covered over the paper so the paper is what's on the inside of your holder. It's really easy. I just take a piece of paper. This is just what I'm going to use. It's a scrap and I cut two pieces that are one inch by two inches. Okay, so I've already got one cut here, except it's three inches long, so let's just cut two inches. Okay. So that's one by two, and here's another piece. I'm going to go one inch. And then I'm going to cut my little two inch. And I could do this by scissors or winging it by you know, side. Okay, so I've got my one inch by two inch pieces cut. Now what I want to do 
So I'm gonna pick one of my stickers that I wanna put on my card here. And my puppy's in here, so he's making his little chomping noises. He's chewing on something. So if you hear that, that's what that is. So let's pick one that we really like to go with this. And I think, let's go with this one. All right, so I'm gonna peel this off. And these stickers are really good on paper, but because the pop cards have a little bit of a slick sheen on it, I put a little glue to protect this from coming off too soon. So for now, let's just stick it over here. So what I wanna do is take my little pieces here, have your glue, let's fold it in half, and put a little glue right here. I'm just gonna stick it on there. And you've got a little space here, so when you fold over, make sure you allow for a little bit of space. And then glue on the other side. And I don't need it as long as that, so I'm just gonna cut off a little bit here. You can leave it if you want, but I'm just gonna cut it. So now we've got a little piece of paper on the side here. So we go put our sticker on, the sticky won't be inside of our little card case. Now, I'm not going to put this other one on yet because I want to line this up so that the sticker is kind of even and meets. Start in the front here. Just put a little glue down to help your sticker stay. It's okay if the little black piece shows through a little bit. It's okay. And then we'll put a little bit of glue back here. Now I want my piece here to protect my sticker on the side here. take my round stickers and this is in the garden also these are many round stickers and then the larger ones and I'm going to pick a sticker and I'm just going to put it over where my my tape overlaps and you don't have to do this you can do this if you want to it can be left overlapping whatever you want to do I'm going to put another sticker here And I'm going to put part of it on the outside. And the other part I'm going to fold to the inside. Okay. And now I'm having sticker fun, so I'm gonna put one back here. <laughs> I love these stickers, I love this collection. I just love everything about the art pop stuff. I think I'll go with that one. Let's just go right here. Okay, okay, that was super, super easy. Now let's just do a little test here and see that our cards fit, and they will. They'll fit just fine, okay? And now we have our little case. Now what you wanna do is make a little tie to go around, but we're gonna decorate this first. We're gonna do a little scribbling and a little painting, just a few things to add a little more oomph to it. Not that they need it, but I just wanna do it. So I'm gonna get out my Stabilo marker and my pencils. I love, love, love working with pencils. I don't know, something about pencils lately really appeals to me. And this to be a little marker. Okay, and we'll need a little brush to put some water on. Okay, before we do any pencil work, I'm gonna take a little bit of gesso and just put a little bit on my mat. And I'm just gonna push back the color a little bit around some of the sticker so that when I put my little pencil marks on that you can see them more. You'll still be able to see the, the colors under the gesso if you do a light coat. You don't have to go overboard. I just wanted to, I wanted my scribbly lines to show. 
I want to do it back here too. Well, let's let that dry for a second. Okay, now I'm going to take my pencils and I just use various pencils. I use a regular number two pencil, I use a jumbo jet from Jerry's Artorama, which is just a regular pencil. It's a bigger lead, softer lead. It's a little smushy, but it's not water soluble. I use my China marker and I use the Stabilo, which is water soluble, and that's what I want my little brush for in case I want a darker uh, marking. But I'm just going to take my regular pencil first, and I'm just going to go around, and I'm just going to go around in circles like this. And do not be afraid to do this. It's fun, and you don't want to miss out on that fun. And just go back and forth, squiggly lines, squiggle, squiggle. And sometimes I might write my name like I did on those papers. I might write another word like art or love art. Just all kinds of stuff. And then I'll switch pencils if I feel like it and want a little bit more softer, smushier look. And I'll smush it with my finger. And by the time I get through, if I don't like the color, if I want it a little darker, that's when I'll go to my Stabilo. And I think we'll do that today just because I feel like it. China marker, just a little bit here. Now we'll do the Stabilo, which is just going to be a little bit around the edge. And then you can take your paintbrush, get a little bit of water, not too, too much, just a little bit. And go around to make your lines darker. And that's really pretty. And then you see all your scribble lines behind that as well, which I love. I like to keep those there. That's why I do them first, because I really want them in the background. By the time you get done, oh, it just makes me happy. <laughs> just makes me feel good to see all of this. And you don't have to go around the circle completely. You can leave it partially done or go all the way around, whatever you want. I'm going to dry this before I turn it over so it doesn't smudge anymore, because I want that to stay just like it is. I like it. I'm going to dry this side. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is add our little ribbon so that we can wrap it around and kind of tuck it down so that it's tied off and stays closed in your purse. You can put Velcro here if you want to. You can make this a magnet if you want to, but you're going to take up space back here for your cards, so I didn't want to do that. But I like the ribbon idea, so we're going to do that. And I pulled out some ribbons here. I have a variety to choose from and to show you a couple of options. I've got a few little funky buttons here that I've had for a while that I might use. I don't know. I went through my fabric stash and I just pulled out some little scraps here that I might use. And I have a little charm that has a hole in it that I might use at the end of my ribbon. This is seam binding and this is very pretty. It goes with it. It'd be safe. And this one here is very pretty. And I really like that with it. And then I found this ribbon in my drawer that I liked. And I think I want to go with this one. It's different. It stands out. It doesn't, these are pretty. They're safe, but I don't want to be safe. And then I'm going to decide on my fabric pieces here. I'm just going to put a little bit of fabric on the top here and I'm going to stitch it down. And let's see, I like the yellow. And there's a little flower here if I wanted to use that. Hmm. And I really like this lace. So let's pretend that I've got this sewed down and we put this on it. And stitch it down. I like that. So we're going to go with that. And we'll see. So what I'm going to do is just take a little piece of my fabric scrap here, okay, and let's say we've got a piece of ribbon here that will make 
about the same length. And then we want to be able to wrap this around and then tuck this down inside. So I'm going to cut a little bit extra. I'll use the extra in a journal page or something like that if I don't use all of it. So I'm going to go to my sewing machine. All I'm going to do is I'm going to layer these like this. And I'm going to go to the sewing machine. I'm just going to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I'm not going to do zigzag or anything. And just back and forth, back and forth until this is secure on there. You can glue it. You can do it by hand. Whatever you want to do, whatever makes you comfortable. Okay, so I've stitched back and forth. Now when you stitch, be sure that your string goes this way and you don't stitch this way and it goes that way. I did not sew this little loose piece in. I think I'll trim a little bit of it off, just a little bit. And I usually would leave my strings hanging, but in this case, I'll probably cut them kind of short. All right, so now what I want to do is I'm going to add this little charm at the bottom of my ribbon, and I want to make sure, here, I'll put my cards in, so we make sure it, it's as thick as it's going to get when you have your full amount of cards in. And close it, and I'm going to bring it around a couple times. And then I want to be able to tuck it down right here. So let's slide my charm up. It's just got a hole. Slide it up as far as I need it. And let's say this is good. Now I can, I can tie this or I can stitch this like this. And I think what I'll do for this one is, I think I'll go stitch it because I kind of like the idea of having the black stitching going across. So I'm going to stitch this and I'll be right back. Okay, I've got that stitched on and I think I'll trim these off. Okay, let's test it again. And I want to be able to stick it down in here, this, just to kind of hold it together. Okay, so I don't need all this trim here sticking out. So what I'll probably do is just trim it off about right there. Okay. Now, I also think I want to add a button, and I like this funky looking one here. <laughs> it really makes it pop. So there's two holes here. I could stitch it by hand on there, or I could just glue it. And I think I want the little stitches here, so I think I'll do it by hand, or I'll just fake it and put stitches in and then glue it down. That may be what I'll do. So let me get my needle and thread. This is waxed thread, which is what I use for my book bindings. And it just happened to be handy, so I'm just going to use it. I was going to go for regular thread, like a carpet thread or upholstery thread or just regular thread, but I think I'm going to go ahead and just use this because it's handy and it's convenient. So I'm just going to put it through there and just tie a knot on the back. Now, I might leave the strings on there. I think I will. Okay, let's glue it down. And I'm going to use a little bit heavier glue for this because it is a button and I want it to stay really well. I'm going to use my Helmar 450 Quick Dry Adhesive Glue. It's going to put glue down here directly. It comes out pretty quick and it likes to keep coming out, so I have to close it back before I do anything. Okay, let's put this down. Okay, we'll let this dry and be back in a second. Okay, we're done. There you have it. Cute, cute, cute little business card holder. You could make these your business cards. And like I said earlier in the video, they could be affirmation cards. They could be um, uplift, uplifting, kind comment cards. They could be prompt cards, whatever you want. So let's open it up and look at our cards real quick. I love that button on there. I think it's adorable. And then we've got our cards. Now you could go back and you could add more on top here. You could paint little flowers or add a little word or whatever you want to do. It would be really cute. But if you pass one of these out somewhere, it could have your name on the back. It could have your YouTube channel on the back, your email address, whatever you want, whatever you want to do. So put them back in there. Just fold it up, bring a little string around. And you could do your string however you want. You don't have to do it this way. I just kind of liked it this way. It's easy. And there we go. We are done. And here's another one I made. And I didn't have a button on it until today. And I thought the button that I didn't use on here looked really cute on this one. And when you open this one, these are the cards in that one. 
but there's nothing on the back of these cards. So that's what those look like. Okay. I hope you enjoyed this. I had a ball making it. It was a lot of fun. I would love to hear from you in the comments below if you are going to try this or if you did make one. Okay, so hope you enjoyed. I will see you again soon. Have a great weather if it is. Bye-bye for now.